I'm going to present my research on the exploration of rhythm systems using instrumental music teaching in Singapore. How do music educator, uh, ed educators teach rhythm? Generally, actually, rhythm is a very important element of music. And due to my past 10 years of experience, I find that the beginners music students always have difficulties in understanding rhythm and to execute it correctly. So for this research, I tend to cover topics on rhythm systems and the context will be based on Singapore public schools from primary schools to secondary schools and junior colleges. The instrumental music on zones chosen are the symphonic and concert bands, brass bands and the Chinese orchestras. And there will be music in instructors from all over Singapore with different learning backgrounds. I'll have a brief quick overview of rhythm systems. One of the most prevalent rhythm systems used today can be traced back to the 19th century French mathematician Pierre Galin, who developed his system of rhythm pedagogy. Lowell Manson actually adopt, adapted the French time name systems, which was developed by Pierre Galin for the use in the United States in the middle of 19th century. The common rhythm systems which are used today are mainly based on Pierre Galin's rhythm systems. In general, there are three main types of rhythm systems. The number-based systems, which is on the right-hand side, 1 E and A, that is the number-based systems. Syllable-based system could be the Kodai system, which is on the third line. And word-based systems will be off. The last one, one monkey running towards me, which that means these music educators will make use of words to teach the students rhythm. Delby mentioned that the consistency of rhythm instruction is difficult to find from classroom to classroom within the same schools and different schools. Students in the public schools actually are taught by various music instructors from various backgrounds and they are registered with MOE for a period of two years. <coughs> These registered music instructors actually have different music learning backgrounds and therefore their approach in teaching rhythm could be totally different from one instructor to the another instructor. My research questions will be What are the factors which influence the use of rhythm systems in teaching rhythm fundamentals to instrumental music on zone students? S second question how do the music on zone instructors link the rhythm systems with the rhythm aptitudes and other rhythm activities and assessments? Third question, to what extent do the learning of rhythm systems improve the students' rhythm recognition skills? Fourth, fourth question, to what extent do the learning of rhythm systems improve the students' sight reading skills? Okay, there's some short time for you to read because there's some definition of key terms. Now it's reading time. <laughs> okay, I'll move on to the next three definitions. I'll move on to the literature <coughs> review chosen for the inspiration of this research. I have chosen one journal which is published to address the goals of effective rhythm pedagogy which is published in 1996 in the United States. It indicated that the importance of teaching rhythm using appropriate method and instruction which includes the learning of a rhythm systems for lifelong use. The journal suggested that the exploration of rhythm systems used by music teachers and which rhythm system is commonly used to teach rhythm effectively. The second review is, is a research done in Malaysia in 2016 by three researchers. 
these res researchers actually conducted a study to examine the effects of learning rhythm with articulation for beginner brass students. The research was conducted with 90 elementary trumpet students assigned to three random groups. Each group underwent five weeks of intervention with a single content but with different approaches in teaching rhythm. <coughs> the research shows that the group which used the adapted rhythmic syllabus approach achieved the highest in rhythm accuracy and followed by the group which used Kodai syllabus and the control group which did not use any rhythm syllabus. This study actually suggested that the connection between the learning of rhythm systems and rhythm recognition ability could be explored. In addition, the connection between the learning of rhythm system and sight reading ability could be investigated as well. A third review is a PhD thesis by Bali. Bali actually examined the published rhythm system dating back to the early 19th century and he surveyed band students in grade 7 to 12, which is from 12 years old to 18 years old, concerning their preference in learning rhythm. In addition, he has interviewed with teachers and students and surveyed the available method books along with many of the other authors. The result shows that most of the educators are using the HA system, which is the number-based system or in short, the 1ENA system. To a lesser degree, the Kodai and other systems are used. There seems to be a relationship between how students were taught the read rhythms and what <coughs> rhythm system were the teacher taught during their college days. And there seems to be no relation to their learning styles at all. This research by Bali actually served as a very important inspiration for my research where I actually replicated his research, but at a smaller context, where I interviewed music educators in Singapore. The last literature review is actually a simple research done by Day in 2014. He actually surveyed three music educators in United States public schools to find out how do they teach rhythm. This research actually inspired me to <coughs> limit my focus group to the public schools in Singapore. I'll move on to my methodology. My research actually investigated the different types of rhythm systems used by educators in Singapore by two methods, the online survey and the follow-up interviews. A mixed method approach was selected for a better data analysis. The list of rhythm systems which I've chosen are actually based on research conducted by various researchers and the questions for the online survey and follow-up interviews were designed based on similar research conducted by two researchers. This study only investigated the use and benefits of rhythm systems used in concert and symphonic bands, brass bands and Chinese orchestra in the Singapore public schools. In fact, there are many other types of instrumental music on zones. However, however, they are not included in this study because the numbers of those on zones are relatively smaller as compared to these three large instrumental on zones. Some reading time again. Uh, description of the three instrumental music on zone. I'll move on quickly for this slide. issues. A privacy, a privacy clause was stated on the online survey form to inform all the participants that all the information entered on the online form is kept confidential. The survey participants were not required to enter their names, emails or any contact numbers. 
However, participants who have opted for a follow-up interview were requested to enter their name and contact details on the online form. A consent form will be given to the participants who will be taking part in the follow-up interview. The purpose of the consent form was to ensure that the participant understood the purpose of the study and he's agreeable to take part in this study and how will the information be treated and destroyed is also conveyed to the participants. <coughs> I'll move on to the boring part, the data presentations. <laughs> okay, this online survey actually received 40 responses from instrumental music educators <coughs> and the main purpose of this survey was just to collect the teaching profiles and rhythm learning backgrounds and it's actually used as an approach, soft approach <coughs> to invite the music educators to volunteer for a follow-up interview. I'll just show some key highlights of this data. One of the questions was, what rhythm system were you taught during your beginning music lessons? It seems that the number system is the most popular where 97.5% actually were taught the number systems. One of the educators were not taught any rhythm systems and one of the educators were taught and a system which is being improvised by his or her teacher. Another question, what rhythm system were you exposed to in college? It seems that everyone chose number-based system again. However, there is also one educator who were not exposed to any rhythm system in college. And one of the educators will talk a system being improvised by his or her teacher. Another question was, do you use any rhythm systems to teach your students? 100% of them use the number system to teach their students. And it seems that most of the educators prefer this system, which is more direct. And there's also one educator who use an improvised system and other educators who improvise a system based on his preference. Uh, this is a slightly more important question. Why do the educators chose the systems? 92.5% actually highlighted that the system must be very simple <coughs> to understand. If not, they will not actually use the particular system to teach the students. Now, I, I did ask them a personal question on this survey font. What rhythm system do you use when you are practicing an instrument? 95% chose the number-based system again. And one instructor actually sub subdivide the rhythm on his own, which is his improvised method. Analysis. All music educators at least use one rhythm system to teach their students. The number-based system, which is the 1ENA rhythm system, is used by all the 40 music educators. It proved that rhythm system is a common tool used by music educators to teach rhythm fundamentals, regardless of the type of instrumental ensembles, level of the students, and the numbers of years the particular instructor have taught. All educators have at least learned one rhythm system during their beginning music lessons, except for one instructor. All music educators were at least exposed to one rhythm system in college, except for another instructor who was not exposed to any rhythm system. The 1ENA number-based system was the most commonly used rhythm system during their beginning music lessons and their college days. The main factor which influences the music educator's choice of rhythm system is whether the rhythm system is simple to understand. I'll move on to the qualitative data presentation. There are four teams which is being highlighted after I conduct an interview with seven educators. There's the team one, the use of rhythm <coughs> systems in teaching instrumental music on Zoom students. Team two, the learning of rhythm systems improve the rhythm recognition ability of students. Team number three, the learning of rhythm system improve <coughs> the sight reading ability of the music students. And last team, suggested improvements to rhythm pedagogy. 
data analysis for the first team. Five out of seven educators incorporate the cracking of rhythms together with the rhythm system for going through the attitudes without using their instruments. The crapping of hands is a common method which is used to link the rhythm systems with the attitudes and rhythm activities. Analysis for team two. Six out of seven music educators agree that rhythm system improve the rhythm recognition ability. As you can see on the screen, instructors C say, uh, you can read on your own. Analysis for team three. Six out of seven educators also agreed that the learning of rhythm system improved the sight reading ability. Instructor E say that the students are able to play a new piece within a short period. Data analysis for team number four. From the replies of the music instructors, it suggested that the, assisting, the current music educators could be lacking training in pedagogy related to rhythm and observation of fellow music educators could be beneficial to the music educators to learn from each another how do the other educators teach rhythm fundamentals. Conclusion Every music educator use a rhythm system. <coughs> rhythm system proved to be effective in teaching rhythm uh, seems to be effective in improving the rhythm recognition and sight reading abilities of music students. All music educators prefer the number systems. And last but not least, rhythm systems play a very important role in rhythm education. There are some limitations for my this study because there are only 40 respondent, uh, respondents only. My aim was initially 100 music edu edu educators, but due to the data collection period, I'm not able to gather more respondents. And because of the four weeks data collection period, actually I have 15 survey respondents who opted for follow-up interview, but only seven can make it to meet up with me or to reply me during the data collection period. A suggestion for future research. Perhaps future researchers could conduct action research that could be conducted to investigate the effectiveness of various common rhythm systems with a few focus groups. Here's my references. And my schedule. And thank you everyone for your time.